My Lord, even if I am working for Obasanjo's second time, what is Mustafa's business with that? If I am convinced that Obasanjo's second term will help this country and I decide to give him publicity, what is wrong in that? What is the business of Major Mustafa with me leading a campaign for a second term for President Obasanjo? My Lord, let me say categorically that by the grace of Almighty God, unpatriotic characters like Mustafa's and the Guazos can never, can never stop me from entering the presidential villa to worship in the new chapel constructed inside the presidential villa by the Obasanjo administration. We have a God who never fails. We have a God who never fails. We have a God who never fails. Who never fails. Who never fails. For a mama. Oh Lord, our God. Our excellent is the name. Oh Lord, our God. Our excellent is the name. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Our God. Our excellent is the name. Oh Lord, our God. Our excellent is the name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Chief. May God forgive you, Sergeant Chief. Mustafa. Please, can you be Chief? Chief. My, my Lord. Chief. My Lord. Chief. I am finished. I am finished. I am finished. My Lord. When Mustafa was telling his lies, you didn't stop him. My Lord, sir. This is a free country. This is a free country. Chief. You can't please. take my mouth. This uh, is a free please. Ah, uh, please, you didn't please, stop him. please, we urge everybody to be silent, please. Just listen to the witnesses and nothing more. Please, please, Chief. we urge you to be silent, please. My Lord. Please, my Lord. please, I... please. My Lord, my Lord, let me conclude. Let me just conclude. My Lord, let me conclude. My Lord, let me conclude. My Lord, we do respect to you. When Mustafa come and tell his lies, then you will listen. You can't get my mouth. Chief. I'm a free Nigerian. My Lord, let me conclude. I'm concluding. Chief. Chief. Uh, please, please, can you listen to me? Chief. We do respect, my Lord. Chief. Okay, Papa. <laughs> please, we urge you to be silent. Chief Yomi Tokoya was born in Lagos State in 1951. He's an industrialist, publisher, politician, and public relations specialist. Many have referred to Tokoya as a typical example of Ajip, an Nigerian parlance which means any government in power, a person who always finds a way to cozy up to the government of the day for personal interests. Chief Abdullahi Yomi Tokoya started out as a praise singer for Chief M.K. Abiola and General Ibrahim Babangida. He published many books and composed many songs in which he praised the two men. For example, General Ibrahim Babangida's book, A Patriotic Leader of Our People, published in 1988. He eventually warmed his way into General Oladik Bodia's circle and started publishing books in which he condemned Chief Abiola and General Babangida and praised General Abacha. He formed the General Sani Abacha Movement for Peaceful and Successful Transition Program, Gesam 98. In this way, he became close to General Abacha. He started spying on General Dia on behalf of Abacha and was one of those that provided information to Abacha that led to the arrest of Dia. However, General Abacha could easily see through Chief Tokoya and he knew that Tokoya was a hustler, a praise singer, and that he was unreliable. So he ordered his ADC and his CSO not to allow Chief Tokoya into the Asurok Villa again. Chief Tokoya repeatedly tried to see General Abacha and he was eventually arrested in January 1998 and linked to the 1997 coup. He was released by General Abubakar after Abacha's death and he filed a petition at the Oputa panel against Major Hamza al-Mustafa and Brigadier Sabu, claiming that they prevented him from seeing Abacha and had him arrested and tortured. He then tried to withdraw the petition when he realized that al-Mustafa and Sabu came prepared to disgrace him. He sang Christian worship songs and claimed that he had forgiven Sabu and Mustafa and told Mustafa to repent. However, Mustafa and Sabu opposed his attempt to withdraw the petition because Yomitokoya had already damaged their reputation and they should have the right to respond to the allegations and clear their name. His animated antics at the proceedings earned him a notorious reputation nationwide and he was by far the most despised witness to appear before the commission.
We previously posted the concluding part of this session a few days ago, so you can check the description for a link to that video. But for now, this is a prelude to the last video posted. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share our video if you enjoy our content. Also, drop us a comment, let us know what city you're watching from. Don't forget to keep the comments civil, and I'll see you in the next video. They are complimentary. Very well, sir. All right, start with the first petition. Tender it. Very well, sir. And then um, we may then. My Lord, I I this don't want to take the house back. Does anybody, any one of you, want to have a PhD? <laughs> These two can give us a thesis. My Lord, it's, it's good for posterity that such things are put in writing. Very good. For That's one. News to have good. around and All right, and then swear him in. Do you want to swear or oh, him? I swear. I chief you are Do solemnly swear that the evidence that I shall give before this honorable court, this honorable commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Yes. Please, can you tell? These honorable commission your full names, address, and occupation. My lord, my name is Chief Yomi Tokoya. I live in Maitama District, Abuja. I am a veteran journalist, political journalist to be precise. I am a publisher. I am a publicity consultant. I'm a widely travel businessman, and I'm an industrialist. I want you to please tell this honorable commission the reason why you are before this house today. Well, my lord, I sent in a letter uh, saying that I have forgiven Major Mustafa and Co. Uh, in the interest of uh, national reconciliation and national unity. But I was surprised that uh, Major Mustafa, Brigadier General Sabo, and Co. will come here and use the forum of this commission to tell blatant lies against me. And in the interest of promoting national unity, in the interest of building a great nation, I need to explain myself and prove to this honorable commission that Major Mustafa and Co. are unrepentant sadists and pathological liars, <laughs> chronic liars. Chief. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. I want you to. Yes, my lord. Uh, I'm sure you, you are already aware of the fact that your petition dated July 22nd, 1999. Yes, my lord. Which you just told the commissioner you sought to withdraw but was objected to have been read before this commission. You are aware of that? Yes, my lord. Now, you are also aware that on 27th of June 2001. Don't you want to tender the first petition? My Lord, uh, is already been tendered as Exhibit 1. Has it been tendered? Very well, my Lord. It's Exhibit, exhibit one. 1. We'll show him Exhibit 1. Let him confirm it's as, his first as petition. Pieces, please, can you give the witness Exhibit 1 and let him confirm if that was his unknown? Yes, my Lord. This is my petition dated 22nd of July 1999. That was your petition. That no. was the one you wanted to withdraw. Yes, my lord. I see. Much obliged. Now, I want you to tell this honorable commission why you eventually, in view of the fact that you wanted to withdraw your petition, but the counsel to the other side objected vehemently. And this uh, honorable commission, in his wisdom, decided to allow it to go on, to clear a lot of things, and to help this honorable commission, and indeed this nation, to move forward uh, in, the, in the spirit of reconciliation and the rest of them. Now, when the 
petition. Do you want him to read the whole of it with one, or do you want to summarize it for Lord, us? I think it would be uh, wasting the time of this honorable commission to go back to that. We had long uh, past that stage. All right. Uh, we already have the witness already has another uh, addendum to the petition, All right. which is as it were, as a result of the provocation. That's the word I like to use. Offered by the respondents. I right, show him that one then, and then let's yeah, please. admit it. Please, I, I, I like you to. You, you, are, you are here in this commission today, you know, to make your grievances known to the things that were said about you on 27th of June 2000 by uh, Major Am Am Mustafa, retired, and some other people. General, uh, Brigadier General. Okay, it's not retired. <laughs> sorry, I stand to be corrected. Major Mustafa, I'm sorry, please. Major Mustafa. By Major Mustafa and uh, uh, General Sabo retired. Yes, my lord, I'm here to reply their false allegations, not only against me, against General Dia, against General Abubakar, because he used their names to blackmail me and defame me for no just cause. Now, I want to, in a systematic manner, to begin to tell this Honorable Commission your response. Thank you very much, my lord. The title of this, my response, is. Major Amsa Al Mustafa and Co. are on repentance no, sadist no, and pathological no, no, liars. Counsel, before he makes use of any document, my Lord, <coughs> let's hope the first my step is a tender document. My Lord, very it becomes an to exhibit. Yes. So if you want to tender it, tender it first. Very grateful to your Lordship. It's marked, mm. then he will read if he wants. Yes, yes. Thank you, my Lord. Please give a copy of that to the witness. Chief, do you have a copy of that petition? Yes, I have of a copy, my lord. Rejoinder? I have a copy, my lord. Uh, my lord, we seek to tender that letter, that uh, addendum. The last exhibit uh, on record was exhibit 14. So I believe this will be exhibit 15. Exhibit 14 was the last. Well, mark it with 15. That is the addendum. Very good. Now, I'd like you to take that exhibit 15 and dissect it to this honorable uh, commission because I believe by that you would have adequately responded to what has brought you today. Thank you, my Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> The title of uh, this my paper is Major Amsa Al Mustafa and Co. are all repentant sadists and pathological liars. A patriotic call for a Nigerian people's revolution that will save Nigeria from all repentant sadists, pathological liars, and human rights violators, and thus ensure that we succeed in building a new democratic, social, economic, and political order in our great nation, Nigeria. A paper presented by Chief Yomito Koya, founder national coordinator by Nigeria campaign organization to the Human Rights Violation Investigation Commission sitting in Abuja on Tuesday, 10th of July 2001 to defend myself, General Adipo Dia retired, General Absalami Abubakar retired from the false allegations against us by Major Amsa Al Mustafa, Brigadier General Ibrahim Sabo, and other unrepentant sadists and pathological liars and all their collaborators in crime and mass humanity to man. Hey, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. Chief. Please listen. It's very important. It's very important. Please. You see that I decided to withdraw this thing, but they said I should come. So I have to explain uh, myself, Chief. my Lord. Chief. Protect me, my Lord. Protect me, my Lord, in the name of God. <laughs> it's too early. Praise be the name Chief. of God. It's yes, Chief, please. I... I want to draw your attention to the fact that uh, there are a series of cases listed for the day to be uh, dispensed with. And uh, I'm aware that what we have before the Honorable Commission Exhibit 15 is 52 paged. So I cannot see how that all will be taken by this Honorable Commission in this sitting. So I want you to go to the nitty gritty of what you have there, not the details. Okay, so right. let me uh, start from uh, page four, my lord. The senior chairman of this, page four, my lord. The senior chairman, page four, my lord, yes. The senior chairman of this patriotic and historic commission. Hello, excuse me, please. I have 
in less than five minutes it's possible to read about 10 pages of this but that is not the issue mm -hmm. right up to page seven and eight is all about things that you can very easily skip and if you are if you had spoken very clearly to your lawyer you really don't need more than 10 or so pages of, of this thing. because I mean apart from all the rest of time you spend uh, mm. talking about yourself right up to page um, mm. no, no, no 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 please I mean right up to I think I think if you see page 13 mm. may almighty God save us from professional blackmailers then maybe it's only from here, from 45, that you started trying to talk about the th issues raised by... My Lord, with due respect to you... No, 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 hold on, just one moment. Okay. See, we don't have a problem with God here. It's, yes. not, it's really not a problem. So, mm. all this, you know, we have, we have... No, it's important because, you see, yes. you need also to take advantage of the time that is available to you. To state your case. You had what uh, those who testified against you mm. you know what it was that they mm. said i think mm. those are the real issues that you need to address and i'm pretty sure that general abdul salam and general diaz general diaz has a lawyer general abdul salam all those generals are capable of defending themselves so if you can just focus on the issues that concern you as raised by general sabo mm. and as raised by major mustafa i think that would help us okay fine my lord my lord my lord I have listened to you, but but it is important for me to protect my name. Mustafa and the rest came here to tell us against me. Even after I decided to withdraw the case, so allow me to read. No, but like, no, no, no. Please, Listen. my Lord. Listen, like I my said, Lord, Mustafa, to me, my Lord. Mustafa told lies against you. He didn't tell lies against God. You okay. spent that about 10 pages so, that are dealing with so God. My Lord, and I'm just yeah. saying, okay, I will talk skip about some. Yomito Koya. That's all I I'm will saying. Skip some. I will my Lord, I will, I will suggest that the witness paraphrase. The, I, will, I will paraphrase. The, okay, I will paraphrase. I will paraphrase. You should, have, you should have done that Chief before. Chief is a Council, you should have done that paraphrase and tender it. Was it? We were in Enugu, they gave us a petition of 130 pages. They prefaced into, I think, 12 to 14 pages. 14 pages. You should have done that. But since he didn't, uh, I think we better leave him because the more you talk, the more you waste time. Yes? As Page as four, my lord. Chief, Page four. Chief, please, please listen. I'm sorry. It's the exigency of the time that will make you to paraphrase. Please, you, you are the one that pulled this thing down. Okay. Please pra paraphrase them in a short, uh, in a few minutes from now. My lord, Page four. Because of the necessary negative reactions of Major Mustafa and Co. to my letter of withdrawal. What page is that? Page four, my lord. I'll be skipping it, you know, to save time of this honorable commission, my lord. But I have a name to protect against these criminals. Because of the necessary negative reactions of Major Mustafa and Co. to my letter of withdrawal, it is imperative to prevent Major Mustafa and Co. from falsifying my revolutionary political career and history, blackmailing me and defaming me, General Dia and General Abubakar. I strongly believe it is also in our national interest for me to defend myself, General Dia, General Salam Abubakar, in respect of the false allegations against us by Major Mustafa and Co. And thus prove to this commission and the general public that these unpatriotic characters are unrepentant sadists and patriarchal liars. These wicked, callous, conscienceless, and heartless violators of human rights must not be allowed to deceive this commission and the general public. This is important. It's very, very important, my lord. It is incredible that these shameless characters, some of who are still on trial for alleged murder in the Lagos High Court, have refused to show remorse and repent for the numerous atrocities they committed against innocent Nigerians during their bachelor years. I have read carefully in the newspapers and watched on the television the false allegations by Major Mustafa and co against me, General Adi Podia and General Abubakar. The bitter truth is that these allegations against us by Major Mustafa and co Mustafa was here telling lies against me. Please, in please, Chief. God, let me explain myself. Chief. Chief. Chief, yes, please. I I know, my lord, my lord, my lord, sir. My lord, can I proceed? It's easy. I have decided to withdraw this thing before, but they insisted they could lies against me. I'm not the only person there in Tokoya now. I have to protect my family's name. My lord, protect me, my lord, protect me, sir. 
people cannot come here and sorry. receive the public. Okay. By the time Hello. I finish, you will know that Mustafa is a liar. Sorry, sorry, He's just trying to get public uh, sympathy. Hold, hold it. Lord. If you my keep, Lord. if you keep quiet and listen to him, sorry, my lord, it will be better than shouting. Sorry, my lord. Let him read his um. <laughs> sorry, pieces. my lord. Please, let's listen to him. Sorry, my lord. My lord. My lord, I can't. My lord, sorry. I my, can't wait, 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 wait. I have the authority of Major Hamza Al Musafa to please plead with the gallery to please listen to the witness Aye. attentively God bless Mustafa. that he is interested Aye. in the person we had. Please, please, my lord. We want to listen to him. Thank you, my lord. My, my lord, my lord, Thank the you, person lord. the witness has just got to, I was of the view that the witness should not talk about anybody but talk about himself. But in this particular uh, context, my lord, he was caught, I mean, Major Mustafa quoted him as I mean, allegedly. A fellow commissioner has made that point. He didn't want to listen. Let him go on. We save more please. time. As a lordship, please. I strongly believe, thank you, my lord. I strongly believe it is also in the national interest for me to discipline myself, General Dia, General Baka, in respect of the false allegations against us by Mr. Mustafa. And thus prove to this commission and the general public that these unpatriotic characters are unrepentant sadists and patriarchal liars. It is incredible. I have read carefully in the newspapers and watched on the television the false allegations by Major Mustafa and Co. against me, General Dia and General Bubaka. The bitter truth is that these allegations against us by Major Mustafa are false, libelous, malicious, mischievous, callous, wicked and defamatory. They cannot be supported with empirical, factual and concrete evidence, full stop. It may be necessary in due course to ask our lawyers to institute legal action against Major Mustafa and Co for these false allegations. Far from being immodest, it is necessary for me to introduce myself briefly to correct the wrong impression, erroneous and unfair impression which Major Mustafa and Co are trying to create about me. I am a genuine patriot, a nationalist, a political journalist, a publisher, a revolutionary politician, an activist, a researcher, a philanthropist, a public consultant and businessman. I have traveled extensively on study tours in Africa, Asia, United States of America, Western and Eastern Europe. I am a true Nigerian from Lagos State. I was born 50 years ago. I attended the following educational institutions for my primary, secondary and university education. UNA Primary School in Ubu, Lagos, 1957-1960. Methodist Primary School in Badon, 1960-62. Equa Grammar School, Equa, 1963-65. Baradama School, 1965-67. University of Lagos Department of Mass Communication, 1970-73, International Student School, comes from Moscow, Russia. I was a principal initiator of a nationwide student demonstration against the government's government, the government must go campaign, 1973. I was a former executive council member and chairman of the Revolutionary and Action Committee of the National of Nigeria Students, 1972-1973. As Nigeria representative, I once served as a regional secretary of the All-African Students Union based in Accra, Ghana, 1973. During my turbulent student days at the University of Lagos, I was given the name of Talks for the Masses, Talks for the People, and Talks for the Oppressed. I came back from service that I brought after the fall of General Gohan's regime in July 1975 and reactivated my publicity and exhibition company, which I established in 1970. Between 1980 and 1982, this publicity and exhibition company co-promoted successfully trade fairs with Ogun Bendel, Anambra, and Oyo State Government, respectively. Convinced of the need for a patriotic and specialized campaign for Made in Nigerian Goods and Services, I founded the Buy Nigeria Campaign Organization, BNCO, in January 1985 and invited other patrons to join this self land organization. The Buy Nigeria Campaign Organization has been staging successful Buy Made in Nigeria campaign shows in Nigeria. I've also been exporting Made in Nigerian Goods abroad since 1985. My lawyer will, will give you the SCBs later, my lord. In the Second Republic, I was a foundation member of the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, and served as senior research and publicity officer at the National Secretariat of the UPN during the electionary campaigns of 1979. Between October 1990 and October 1991, I campaigned as a governorship aspirant in Lagos State under the platform of the Defense Social Democratic Party. 25. As a revolutionary politician and political activist, I have been detained a number of times by the SSS, State Security Service, during and after my turbulent student days because of my revolutionary and progressive political activities and my constant criticisms of the bojo's corrupt and reactionary status quo. As a prolific writer and publisher, some of my publications have enjoyed massive patronage in Nigeria and abroad. 
I've been honored with some chief council titles and awards in recognition of my patriotic and selfless services to humanity. I was honored with the title of Onike Gebura I of Ikaja Land, Lagos, in 1988 by His Royal Highness Obama Ilu Olu of Ikaja Land, Lagos. Attached here with a list of my publications as an exhibit. I'm a result of very amiable political strategist and tactician who does not have time to attend social parties or join social clubs. My hobbies are mainly reading, writing, and discussing Nigerian international affairs with fellow patriots, revolutionary politicians, and activists. I was the founder, national chairman, Peter, my lord, of the Funk Jerusalem Abacha Movement for a peaceful and successful transition program, GESAM 98, a movement that was dedicated to ensuring that the late Jerusalem Abacha hand over to a democratically elected civilian government in October 1998. Because of my constant criticism and of the follies and excesses of the corrupt characters, criminals, reactionaries, conservatives, psychophants, political prostitutes, political opportunists, flatterers, court jesters, and unpatriotic elements in the corridors of power of the defunct Abacha administration. I was arrested on the 15th of January 1998 inside the presidential villa Abuja, tortured, detained, and later charged for sedition in jobs before the special military tribunal, headed by General Victor Malu which tried the Inolati Padilla and to take coup suspects in respect of the so-called coup d'etat of 20th December 1997 to overthrow the administration of Legion Hassani Abacha. I was discharged and acquitted by the Special Military Tribunal on this frame-up charge of sedition on the 28th of April 1998, but the kleptomaniac Abacha administration refused to release me. I was eventually released on the 15th of July 1998 by the General Salami administration from these six months of illegal, unjustified, and undeserved detention. That is January 15th to July 15, 1998. I am the founder of the Movement for a United and Peaceful Nigeria, MUFAPEN, and the International Organization for the Repentance and Forgiveness of Sins, I offer for a force. I am a genuine patriot, nationalist, and revolutionary politician who has made animal sacrifices and invested a considerable amount of time, energy, and millions of naira in the course of my Sheka revolutionary political career as a committed and dedicated fighter for social justice in our society and as a dogged defender of the oppressed, exploited, and suffering people of our great nation and the world. I am a completely detribalized Nigerian, and most of my friends are from the northern and eastern states of our great nation, Nigeria. I regard my activities as revolutionary and everlasting contributions to the struggle to build a truly united, peaceful, strong, great, powerful, prosperous, just, egalitarian, technologically developed, self-reliant, and democratic people's republic of Nigeria. Please be patient with me, my lord. Major Mustafa Anko said that Jaradi and Jara Bubaka planned three or more coups, and that I was the one that lit the coups and brought the reports of these coups to Lake General Abacha and the SSS and Director of Military Intelligence and National Intelligence Agency and Nigeria Police. That's what Mustafa said. Major Mustafa and co-founder said that the late General Abacha and the security agencies paid me heavily as an informant. That's an insult to me. I wish to say categorically, my lord, I am not an informant. I have no reason to be an informant because I am managing profitable ventures as a businessman, an industrialist, a publisher, and a publicity consultant. I'm a pride to the journalism profession. I'm a pride to the nation. Some of my books have been translated into French, German, and Russian. I'll provide copies. I did not know about these so-called coups. I did not know about these so-called coups. These coups that Mustafa said I was the one that led the result of these coups to, to General Bacha. I don't know anything about those coups. My God is my witness. I did not know about these so-called coups, which Major Mustafa and Co. said General D and General Baka planned. And thus, I could not have led the coups or took the parts of these coups to the late General Bacha and security agencies. The pertinent question to ask are as follows. My Lord. Please, sir, listen to me, sir. How can experienced generals like General Dia and General Abubaka plan coups and allow a civilian like me, regarded in the corridors of power then as a friend of late General Abacha, to know about these so called coups? Let's think which Major Mustafa Anko said they planned. How can they let me know when they know that I'm close to Abacha? Mustafa is a liar. Are informants to security agencies not required to supply information in writing or make statements? We are the written statements, Major Mustafa. We do respect you. We are the written statements. We are the audio or video tapes. I prepare for the Legend of Abacha and security agencies. On the so-called security reports, Major Mustafa and Co. said I was supplying to them regularly. May God forgive you, Mustafa. I'm bigger than Sabo. We are the letters with which I requested for money 
from Nigeria Abacha, Major Mustafa and Co. and the spread agencies. I was spending my money, millions of dollars, I can prove it. I brought some of my bank statements to prove. We are the papers that I signed when the Legion Abacha and the security agencies paid me heavily for the so-called security costs I was supplying them. May Almighty God save us from professional blackmailers, wicked and callous storytellers, unrepentant studies and pathological liars. Amen. <laughs> my Lord, with due respect to you, sir, I wish to say categorically that Major Mustafa is a confused storyteller. He needs psychiatric attention. I also said he can take me to court and prepare for him. I told them I would draw this down for giving them. I was on the mission white dog. Why are they disturbing my life? Major Mustafa, a confused storyteller, also said that the so called coup plot of 1997 was planned in Jaradia's house and that I was involved because Jaradia promised to appoint me as his media coordinator after the success of the coup plot. This is also a blunted lie. However, I wish to argue. My Lord, this is very, very important for your commission. My Lord, I wish to argue. There was no recoup plot on the line. There was no recoup plot by dear. Yeah. It was General Bamei, General Caesar, General Magashi, and the Air Force Major Musa who sold a dummy to Dia and went ahead to alert Abacha. This has to be properly investigated, my Lord. The issue should be a question of logic, a question of language, a question of definition and the concrete reality on the ground. My Lord, listen to my argument, please. Patriotic Nigeria, please, for God's sake, we want to find out the truth. We want to find out who are telling the truth so that this country can be built for the interest of all of us. Since Lieutenant General Ishaya Bamiya and Co., since Lieutenant General Bamiya and Co., who initiated the coup plot, alerted to General Abacha, collected millions of naira from General Abacha, this money was withdrawn from the Central Bank, my Lord. They can check Central Bank December 1997, the amount of money that was withdrawn. After they alerted Abacha, they were paid millions of Naira. I even remember dates when, when, when portmotors of money were being packed into the barracks. IPP barracks, which they paid them with. Listen now. Listen, please. Listen, we want the facts. You want the facts. Let me tell you the truth. I have told them I have withdrawn this case against them. But they want me to come and talk. So let me tell you the truth. Chief. So Chief. you can be saved. Chief. Listen. Yes. That section is very important, my lawyer. Since Lieutenant General Pamey and Co., who initiated the coup plot, alerted to General Abacha, collected millions of Naira, and played along, were not tried with Jaradia at the Special Military Tribunal in Jos, one can argue that what happened in Abuja on the 20th of December 1997 can be described as a set of coup d'etat or a fake coup d'etat and not a real coup d'etat in the real sense of the words coup d'etat or the universal meaning of the words coup d'etat. One can also argue that if Lieutenant General Bamiya and Co. did not sell a dummy to Jaradia, did not deceive Jaradia, did not alert the late General Abacha, did not collect millions of Naira and then played along, this so-called coup d'etat could have succeeded because Lieutenant General Bamiya, as Chief of Army Staff, and some of those who played along were said to have soldiers under their control whom they could have deployed to ensure the success of their coup plot. I stress again, my Lord, with due respect to you, my Lord, that this issue should be a question of logic, a question of language, a question of definition, and a question of the concrete reality on the ground. Distinguished members of this patriotic and historic commission, we surely help us, my Lord. You will help us to find an answer to this controversial question. Was there a real coup d'etat on the 20th of December 1997? Major Mustafa further said that Jaradia gave me different plate numbers to fix on my personal cars during my visit to Jaradia's house to plan the so-called 1997 coup plot. This is another blatant lie by this arrogant, cocky, heartless, conscienceless basket mouth called Major Mustafa. The truth is that. My Lord, sir, the truth is that, the truth is that I used two personal Mercedes Benz cars. My Lord, sir, the truth is that I used two personal Mercedes Benz cars during the Abacha years, a white one and a yellow one. And these two cars and their plate numbers were well known to the security officials that Major Mustafa posted to the entrance gates of the presidential villa and Jadia's house. Thus, there was absolutely no reason for me to use different plate numbers on these two cars which were well known to Major Mustafa's security officials. I fear only God. I don't fear any compass like Mustafa. Major Mustafa also said that I supply information regularly to Lady General Abacha and the security agencies 
on two former heads of states, General Ibrahim Babangida retired and Chief Anes The questions I need to ask Mustafa are as follows. I'm Brigadier Sabu. This is a man I used to respect. What kind of information did I supply on General Babangida and Chief Shonekon? What kind of information did I supply that could have made the late General Abacha to order the arrest of General Babangida? My Lord, it is a well-known fact that General Babangida and the late General Abacha were very close friends from the early years in the Nigerian Army. Does the late General Abacha, may so rest in peace, will definitely not need information from me on his so-called friend? This is simple logic. I first met General Babangida when he was Chief of Army Staff, Nigerian Army, and after he took over power and became President Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I always offered General Babangida patriotic suggestions on how to solve the varied and complex social, economic, and political problems facing our great nation, Nigeria. I wish to assert that I did not supply any information to the late General Abacha and the security agencies, which, according to Major Mustafa, could have made the late General Abacha to order the arrest of General Babangida. In respect of Chief Shonepo, I wish to say that I met him only once in my life. And it was at a public ceremony at the International Conference Center Abuja in October 1993, when he was head of the interim national government. So, Major Mustafa, where did that get information on Chief Shonekon, which you said I supplied to Lady General Abacha? And security. Were you ever there? All the times I was privileged to talk to General Abacha. Were you there? General Abacha always talked to people one by one. Even you yourself, Mustafa, I think it was only once I ever talked to you in your office throughout the Abacha years. That's the truth. Major Mustafa also said, I brought reports on the activities of Nadeko to the late General Abacha and the security agencies. This is another blunt lie. I've been living in Abuja since 1991, and my occasional visits to Lagos during the Abacha years were strictly for business commitments. For example, my export promotion business in Lagos. Thus, it could not have been easy for me to be monitoring the activities of the Lagos-based Nadeko. I was even a supporter of Nadeko. Comrade Pascal Bafia, I will try and bring him here, my lord, former President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, can testify and confirm that I initiated meetings in my guest house in Abuja to persuade the late General Abacha, may so rest in peace, to cooperate so that the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja then can grant bail to the late Chief Emka Abiola, who Major Mustafa and Co. detained unjustifiably during the Abacha years. They scuttled, they scuttled it, Mustafa and, and, and Sabu. I also fought for the release of late General Shehu Musa Yaradua, who Major Mustafa and Co. also detained unjustifiably during the Abacha years. These are facts. God is my witness. It is common knowledge that Nigerian security agencies have many brilliant, intelligent, and well-trained of officials, PhDs, master degree holders in the employment, who can handle all the assignments. Major Mustafa and Bikida Sabo said, told this commission on the 27th of June, while my regular schedule during the Abacha years. My lord, they are liars. I must really be a super genius to have handled all the assignments Major Mustafa and Co. credited to me, and to have collected millions of Naira. Have you? I authored and published two books and one booklet on the late General Abacha. And I think they have uh, given some of them access to you, my lord. I also financed the production of music cassettes and virus on Abachaism, a self-reliant ideology for a new Nigeria. I organized launching ceremonies for these books and the music cassettes. And many Nigerians, I will not deny that, from both the public and private sector attended the launching ceremony and made donations, millions of Naira. You know, my lord, is it illegal in Nigeria now? Or is it a crime in Nigeria to spend sleepless nights writing books and launching the books and collecting donations. What is wrong in that? I'm a trained journalist. These launching ceremonies were well publicized in the mass media. Three heads of SSS, I will not tell lies, my lord. Director General SSS, Director General National Intelligence Agency, and the Chief of Defense Intelligence also donated towards the production of more copies of these books, music cassette, and barrels. I'm eating from my sweat. Those the payments I received from the security agencies were for these books, music cassettes, and bureaus. And now for the so-called security reports and information, which Major Mustafa and my former friend, Brigadier General Sabo, claim I was supplying to the late General Abacha and the security agencies. In fact, I am greatly surprised that Brigadier General Sabo, former Director of Military Intelligence, a man that I used to respect, a man I used to respect for his intelligence, swore by the Holy Quran at this sitting of this commission on Wednesday, 27th of June, 2001, and yet two blatant lies against me. General Sabo, I leave you to Almighty Allah. The truth is that you, General Sabo, I swear in the name of God, never donated one single naira for my books, music artists, and barrels. And you never paid me any money. Your conscience will prick you, General Sabo. And you never paid me any money for the so called document on Abacha. If I had not given any document on Abacha, if I give you any document, bring the good document before the commission. Bloody liar. Which he said I brought to him.
Brigadier General Sabo also never met me in the office of his boss, Air Vice Major Idi Musa. I wish Air Vice Major Idi Musa is here so that Air Vice Major will confirm to you that General Sabo never met me in Air Vice Major Idi Musa office. Air Vice Musa is, is an intelligent man, he's a honest Nigerian. He will confirm to you that General Sabo never met me in his office. I want to accept, my Lord, that all these false stories about payments to me for supplying security reports and information to the late General Abasha and the security agencies are mere figments of imagination of Major Mustafa and Brigadier General Sabo. But I have to understand Mustafa's dilemma. I was in just prison for six months. You know, he's already disoriented, and I think he needs medical psychiatric attention. I am sure that if he can go to court if he wants and sue me, I'll sue him too. I'm sure that if Major Mustafa have an atom of conscience inside him, his conscience is always pricking that he came to this commission to take black land lives against me, Jaradi and Jarabubaka. I'm also sure that if Brigadier Dr. Alaji Sabo retired, have an atom of conscience in him, Brigadier, if you have an atom of conscience in you, it will continue to prick you throughout your life. That you came to this commission to take blunt and lies against me, Jaradia and Jarabubaka. Because they retired you. Is that why you are coming to tell us against them? They will come here. I will try and convince them to come here. I will try and make sure the summons gets to them. The bitter truth is that Major Mustafa, my Lord, my Lord, if I talk, if I talk, some of these people will spend the rest of their years in jail. I have documents to finish them. The bitter truth, the bitter truth. My Lord, please listen to me. This is a fact-finding commission. It's a fact-finding commission. Please, you want the truth so that this country can, can, can progress. Please, 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 in the name of God, listen to me. The bitter truth, my Lord, the bitter truth, my Lord, is that Major Mustafa and Brigadier General Sabo came to this commission to tell black and lies against me, blackmail me and defame me because I criticized both of them and I exposed them in my petition to this commission and in my interview press statements published in newspapers and magazines after General Abubakar released me from detention on the 15th of July 1998. And they also came here to tell us against me because I campaigned vigorously for the release of General Adia, Adisan, Onari Waju, and Co., whom they all implicated in the so-called 1997 coup plot. Some of these cuttings, my lawyer will present them as exhibits later. I think I can see some of, some of that. Dia's life in prison, how the coup cops were tortured, put Gwaz orders on trial, uh, group one by me, his orders retired. Uh, Bami Mustafa block coup panel, Tokoya campaign for DIA orders release, group list for DIA orders, Tokoya urges federal government to release DIA orders, free DIA, the South Lana Wadi, Guadabi and Co campaign organization. These were published in different newspapers when I was released by General Abubakar. A school suspect demands Mustafa's arrest, and I put pressure until he was arrested. Abubakar PRC told, told to free coup com convicts, try Guazo Mustafa in open court. He's already in open court now. Guazo Mustafa orders should be tried, Yami Tokoya. Guazo Mustafa held Abacha captive. First prophets ruined Abacha. Group orders flee non release of Guarabi. Why the framers, Yomi Tokoya? The role of security agencies under the terrorist Abacha administration and the progressive Abacha administration. This was a full page of Atoria in Daily Champion, Thursday, 14th of January, 1999. My lord, my lawyer will uh, uh, give you all the exhibits of some of these publications. Major Mustafa, I wish to say categorically, my lord, that Mustafa has been using the cities of this commission to tell plantant lies against General Salami Abubakar because former head of state order his arrest and refused to release him from detention. Before he handed over to Chief Olivia Kumaba Sonjo, Major Mustafa has also been using the cities of this commission to tell plantant lies against General Dia because he was not happy that General Abubakar released General Dia and Co., whom they implicated in the so-called 1997 coup plot. Brigadier General Sabo has also been using the cities of this commission to tell plantant lies against General Salami Abubakar because General Abubakar ordered his arrest and detention in 1998 and with the cooperation of General Bamehi, retired him from the Nigerian army because it was both General Bamehi and uh, General Abubakar that retired Brigadier Sabo. You know, internal intrigues within the military. Major Mustafa said I was introduced to the late General Abacha at the Defense House in September 1993. Three months before General Abacha took over from Chief Anes Shureko. This is also a lie. The truth is that I first met the late General Abacha in 1985 in Government House, Bini City. The late General Abacha was then the GOC, Second Mechanized Division of Nigerian Army. This was in 1985. And I approached him to talk to General J.T. Husseini, who was then the Governor of Bender State, in respect of a controversy over my staging a by the Nigerian campaign show in Bini City. It was from that period that we became friends. Not three months as 
by the lie Mustafa told this honorable commission, my lord. Thus, I was already friendly with General Abacha since 1985, eight years before he took over power. Please see my book, Abachaism, a self learned ideology for a new Nigeria, published in 1996, page 24. My lord, this honorable commission can also contact General Jeti Hussein retired. He can also be contacted to confirm this fact. So, Mustafa, I knew the late General Abacha, may so rest in peace, long, 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 long before he took over power. Major Mustafa said General Abacha ordered my arrest in respect of the so called 1997 coup plot. This is also a lie. I want to punch all the lies. This, this young man, you know, who could have been an asset to this country, came to tell this honorable commission and the general public, don't let us be deceived. We want a great country. If I'm guilty of any offense, let them take me before the court. I've not stolen any copper. <laughs> Major Mustafa, the truth is that Major Mustafa, Brigadier Asabo, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Omeka, who, is, who has run away from Nigeria, and other initiators of the so called 97 coup plot, were responsible for the arrest of innocent people for coup plotting. Let me say some facts, my, my lord. Agents of Mustafa arrested me inside the presidential villa on the 15th of January 1998. That is about over three weeks after they arrested Janadia and Go, whom Mustafa claimed I planned coup with. Why didn't you arrest me with, with, with Janadia on the 20th of December? Why? Why did me the 15th of January? Bloody liar. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Kane Frank Omeka arrested me George General Rewaju and the late Kane Ulu Akiyode may so re rest in peace. You know, they killed Colonel Kane Akiyode, they poisoned him. Brigadier General Sabo retired, arrested Major General Abus Abu Karim Adisa, Brigadier General Sabo, who collected 100,000 naira for, the, for his wife, for his uh, daughter's marriage. Trick Adisa, drank in Adisa's house, and went there to arrest Major General Adisa. I'm sure Major General Adisa said that during his, during his uh, uh, presentation before you, my lord. These are facts. General Abubakar, in his official capacity as the chief of defense staff, was only the convening authority. General Abubakar was just performing his official duty. After Mustafa and Co. and Sabo and Co. have initiated people, have collected money from Central Bank, I will prove it, and then set up the and the rest. You know. So the file was passed to the Chief of Defense Staff as the convening authority, my lord. I underline the convening authority for the Special Military Tribunal, established to try the so called coup suspects arrested by Major Mustafa and other initiators of the so called 1997 coup plot. My lord, Major Mustafa said I was not given a proper charge. They wanted me to be tried for treason. But my lord is a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. He's a miracle working God. The Alpha and the Omega. He's a miracle working God. Praise the Lord. Major Mustafa said I was not given a proper charge, my, my lord. My lord, these people wanted to kill me. These people wanted to kill me for no just cause. Major Mustafa said I was not given a proper charge by General Abubakar. And that General Abu Abubakar covered his alleged involvement in the 1997 coup plot and other misdeeds by releasing me from prison. Because according to Mustafa, I had all the information concerning General Abubakar's participation in the so-called 1997 coup plot. My lord, this is a fact-fighting commission. So you can see why I want to, why I take trouble to write 52 pages. To explain. It's an historical document. So you can get the facts, my lord, and help us, help this nation to know the truth. The above assertions by Major Mustafa are all planted lies. The truth is that when I was, when I appeared before the Special Military Tribunal that sat in Joss in 1998, I was charged for sedition. Great lawyers, you know the meaning of sedition. I was charged for sedition. Yeah, I respect lawyers. One of my junior brothers is even a senior advocate of Nigeria. <laughs> I was charged for sedition. Major Mustafa, Lieutenant Colonel Frank Omeka and Co. tapped my cellular telephone number to see how vicious these people were in early December 1997, before the true bomb on Jarabi Jaradia. They had already been tapping my phone, holding me as a suspect, something I didn't know anything about, my lord. And they brought the cassette, which they used in tapping my telephone discussion with a Shokoto based businessman, Chief Abayami Yakubu, to implicate me in this so called 1997 coup plot. God is there. In fact, it was Shiva Bayami Yakubu who telephoned me. I was not the initiator of the telephone conversation. I wish to appeal to this honorable commission, my lord, in the name of God. It's a very painful matter to me to request for this cassette from the SSS and the Directorate of Military Intelligence, the official custodians of all exhibits presented to implicate innocent people in this so-called 1997 coup plot. 
My Lord, you will discover the truth after listening to my discussion with Shifabayo Miyakubu in this cassette that I did not discuss any coup plot with Shifabayo Miyakubu. Our discussion was centered on the reason why my name was not announced as a minister when the late General Bacha appointed some new ministers in early December 1997. My Lord, you play the cassette and see what we discuss. And it the matters on the cabinet reshuffle of early December 1997. In a meeting I had with the late General Bacha, Ms. Grace Soares in peace, in early 1997, he promised to appoint me as a minister because General Bacha always tell me that I have revolutionary and patriotic ideas, which, if implemented, will help to boost the social, economic, and political development of our great nation, Nigeria. These are facts. The late, I will not tell lies against a dead man. The late General Bacha helped me in high esteem. I have some correspondences here, which, which my lawyer will give your commission, my lord. You know, from him, he helped me in high esteem because of my revolutionary and patriotic ideas. And because I always tell him the truth about national issues. Unfortunately, I was once on a, on a, on a plane ride with General Bacha. Mustafa was not there, you know, and the man was congratulating me in the presence of General Jethro Seni that Nigeria needs more people like Chief Yomito Koya, who gives us good, ad, good suggestions, good advice. I can pick General Seni to testify in a plane ride from Joss to Abuja. Unfortunately, on patriotic characters and reactionaries like Major Mustafa and Alaji Guazo opposed my being appointed as a minister because they were afraid of me. Mustafa is a coward. He called himself Lion Heart. Which Lion Heart? Goat Heart. <laughs> I wish to appeal to members of this commission and the general public, my lord, to find time to read and do a content analysis of some of my books, some of my press statements, and some of the letters that I wrote during the Abasha years. I was just a revolutionary among criminals and conservative elements. My Lord, this is your commission will discover revolutionary and patriotic ideas and suggestions in these books and letters, which I strongly believe can help this nation. My Lord, you also discover, my Lord, I beg in the name of God, find time to read some of some contents of my books and my letters and my press statements. You will also discover another distinguished members of this honorable commission. You are great Nigerians. God bless you and your family forever. You also discover that I love Nigeria passionately with all my heart. And that my major aim of being in the corridors of power is to promote revolutionary ideas and suggestions which can change our great nation fundamentally, qualitatively and positively. And also ensure national unity, peace, progress and stability in our great nation. My Lord, you also find out in my books and my press statements that I love this country too much and that as a revolutionary politician, I have a vision, a great vision. Books don't tell lies. Go and read my book and see my ideas. You know, I have a vision for a new Nigeria. That would be a great pride to all of us. There is no evidence, my Lord. I've gone through all the exhibits which Major Mustafa and Brigadier Sabo. I'm so surprised about you, General Sabo. There is no evidence in all the exhibits which Major Mustafa and Brigadier Sabo submitted to this Patriotic Commission to link me with the 1997 coup plot, whether it was a set-up coup d'etat or a real coup d'etat or a fake coup d'etat, in the real sense of the word coup d'etat. Major Mustafa Ananaji Guazo, former NSA to late General Bacha, started making it difficult for me, you know, by the mid of the Abacha years, to see General Bacha regularly, because they were afraid of my patriotic and revolutionary ideas. In fact, one of them once remarked, we must stop this chief from Lagos from turning General Bacha into a revolutionary. So Mustafa and Sabo succeeded in turning me into what? You turn him into what? Into the greatest looter in Nigeria's history. It is called common knowledge in the Abacha years that Major Mustafa and Alaji Guazo prevented and blocked many patriots and even ministers from seeing the legend Abacha to offer him patriotic ideas and suggestions. Mustafa was telling us here yesterday that uh, people have access to Abacha, security agents. It's a lie. The SSS people are here. Please confirm for Mr. Wadwa, former DG SSS. How many times Mustafa allowed him to see General Bacha? These are the people who created this problem in this country. People like this, Mustafa and Sabo. They were blocking people from advising that man. I believe that man could have performed better if people have regular access to him. The same thing is still happening under Jibaba under, under Sanjo. These are the truth. My Lord, sir, even under, under President Sanjo now, some people are blocking him from seeing people who will give him good advice. Some people are blocking Sanjo from from seeing people who can give him advice to help us solve our problems. My Lord, this is listen to this, is very important. This is very important, my Lord. 
these despicable and fetish characters, Mustafa Guazo and Co, eventually imprisoned General Bacha inside the presidential villa. They imprisoned this man inside the villa. They started burying live black cows and white rams. Mustafa is a very fetish person. I can prove it. Inside the presidential villa, they were burying black cows and white rams. These are facts. I will make some documents available to you, my lord, in this respect. And they succeeded in shaming the late General Bacha and turn him into the greatest looter of public funds in Nigeria's history. My lord, Mustafa and co imported deceitful marabouts and fake malams from Senegal, from Mali, from Niger, and Burkina Faso. They were paying their millions of naira to shame the late General Bacha. These are the truths. This is a fact-finding commission. Let me tell you the truth. I didn't want to come here before. I said I'm forgiving them. I'm a Christian. I'm forgiving them. Let them face their problems, you know. So, they imported all these malams from these countries and used them to deceive General Abacha for their own wicked, callous, mischievous, selfish, and personal interest. My lord, Alaji Gwazo and Co. also became looters of public funds. Do most of us say he's, he's, he's an honest person? You will hear what I will say now. Alaji Gwazo and Co. also became looters of public funds and started acquiring properties within and outside Nigeria with these stolen public funds. It is public knowledge now that over 20 houses illegally acquired by Alaji Guazo and Co. have been confiscated and sold by the democratically elected Obasanjo administration. We are all aware they see so many properties from Guazo. These are facts. Major Mustafa was forced to appear before an investigation panel carefully put together by Alaji Ibrahim Kumasi, former Inspector General of Police, to answer questions of massive and fraudulent withdrawal of huge funds from the Central Bank of Nigeria. The report is there, my lord. Ask the new Inspector General of Police. Is there during the Abacha years? Major Mustafa eventually prevented the late General Abacha after imprisoning him and shaming him from implementing the recommendation of this investigation panel. Mustafa also set up an Al Mustafa Foundation. My lord, these are facts. They use federal government owned planes to take people to Nguru. Mustafa collected over a hundred million naira. Most of this money were public funds. My lord, the facts are there with the SSS. They were public funds donated by ministers and governors and government contractors. The account of this Al Mustafa Foundation is still being controlled by Mustafa and his agents. So how can this one come and talk about integrity? I want to try and defend me. I leave it to Almighty Allah. I strongly believe, my lord. I strongly believe, my lord. I strongly believe, my lord, that there is still a patriotic need by the Obasanjo administration to ask the security agencies to conduct more investigation on Major Mustafa, Alaji Gwazo and Co. in order to recover more public funds and illegally acquire properties from them. I myself, I will submit myself to investigation. All what God has given in my life so far, I can explain it. I was not involved in any contract deal under Abacha. I made my money genuinely. They can investigate me. I will submit myself to investigation. My Lord, I want to say that the legend Abacha if you are listening to my advice to remove criminals like Mustafa, one of my books there which my lawyer will give you and some of the letters will show you that I was fighting with him, asking General Abacha to remove Mustafa and Gwazo because I realized that these are criminals. I want to say that if the General Abacha had listened to my advice to remove criminals like Mustafa and Gwazo from public office, they could not possibly have succeeded in shaming General Abacha, in imprisoning General Abacha in the villa. In turning General Bacha into the greatest looter of public force in Nigeria history, I think the sins of General Bacha is on the head of Mustafa and Co. Reactionaries and unpatriotic elements like Major Mustafa and Raji Guazo also prevented the late General Bacha from implementing ideas from different people, not me alone, my lord. My disagreement with Raji Guazo was not really because of fun. Because Mustafa came here to tell you that General Bacha said they should give me money. I think it was 100 million. But they had the money. They had the money. Why are they coming to tell lies against me here? You know. So my disagreement with Alaji Guazo was not really because of funds, which the late General Abacha approved for the printing of more copies of my books, as claimed by Major Mustafa. The truth is that I was advising the late General Abacha to remove tips and rocks like Guazo and Mustafa from public office when I noticed they were stealing public funds and acquiring properties with the stolen public funds. In fact, I wrote a widely circulated letter, a stinker, in August 1994. So, my lord, you can see from the beginning of the Abacha years, I was fighting inside. I was fighting the follies and excesses of these criminals. 
I wrote a letter to God so I can quote. I said, Sir, may Almighty Allah enable Jonathan Abaja no more about your own patriotic activities and they deploy you to a less sensitive position before you create more problems for this administration. <coughs> Sir, the bitter truth is that you have not been faithful and loyal to this administration. I pray to Almighty Allah to forgive you for your misdeeds and give you the courage to accept the content of this my letter in good faith. That was the letter Mustafa was referring to. There is nothing in that letter about coup plot. I didn't call Guazo a coup plotter. I'm only saying that, you know, Abacha should know that. If the letter was written to, to, to General Abacha, then I copied everybody within the villa. So, my lord, the Peter truth is that, sorry, my lord, many top government officials, ministers, members of the professional ruling council congratulated me for having the revolutionary and patriotic courage. To write such a letter, a stinker to Guazo, I went to say, my lord, that it was well known in the corridors of power during the Abacha year that I was a lone voice fighting these corrupt characters and criminals. Thus, that was one of the major reasons why they conspired to arrest me and implicate me in the so-called 1997 coup plot. It's a very, very painful to, to me. They almost killed me in just prison. It took them some time to order my arrest because they were looking desperately for evidence to implicate me. Why can I and co were arrested between the 28th and 22nd of December, 1997? Mustafa and his group of sadists only ordered my arrest on the 15th of January, 1998, inside the presidential villa. My lord, when I was released from detention in just prison by the great General Abubakar, I conducted a private investigation which revealed to me that the late General Bacha, may so rest in peace, opposed my arrest with good reasons and detention for this so-called 1997 coup plot. Because General Bacha argued that I am a genuine patriot nationalists and revolutionary who cannot be involved in a coup plot to destabilize Nigeria. However, Mr. Mustafa and Alaji Guazo went to show the legend of Abacha a negative news story about me, which they published in Abuja-based weekly newspaper. It was well known in the quarters of power during the Abacha years that this newspaper was funded with public funds provided by Mr. Mustafa and Alaji Guazo. A copy is available with my lawyer as an exhibit. They publish this negative story titled Bochku Plot. Where is Yami Tokoya? They said in this new story, my lord, they said in this new story, my lord, this new story which they published against me. <laughs> my lord, sorry. Yes. Where is Yami Tokoya? To, I want to show you how wicked and callous these human beings are. May God forgive them. They said, I was interrogated according to the new story planted by Mustafa and Co. They said I, Chief Tokoya, was interrogated by the Coup Investigation Bureau headed by Major General Chris Garuba. I was said to have been implicated in the foil plot. The father said in this newspaper, sources revealed that several incriminating documents were found at Chief Yomi Tokoya's residence in Abuja, including a copy of the Abata Coup speech, which he was said to be revising and fine tuning. Can you imagine, my lord? Eh? Sources also told Abuja Mirror that Chief Tokoya might have confessed to the investigators that he was one of those who were responsible for identifying and compiling the names of those to be eliminated during the apartheid coup plot. Can you see the kind of lies they told against me? If not for the intervention, divine intervention of my God Almighty, you know, they could have killed me. They could have been charged for treason. Major Mustafa, Alaji Guazo, and Co. used this negative story they published in this Abuja based weekly newspaper to convince the legend Abacha that I was involved in the so-called coup plot in 1997 and that he should not insist on my release after they arrested me and flew me to just they hang off my hand they beat me if you see how these criminals sent by Mustafa were beating me for no just cause <laughs> Major Mustafa, Alaji Guazo and Co send their bodyguards to just prison to torture me some of these news cuttings are with my lawyer in fact Sergeant Rogers tear gas my eyes and threw me down from the Black Maria and wounded my right leg my lord, if I could show you, I still have the marks here on my right leg. Wounded my right leg, the day they asked me to implicate Admiral Mike Aigwe, and I refused. I leave them to God. So, Major Mustafa, let me ask you some questions again. Where were you, Major Mustafa, when I was detained by the SSS for criticizing General Gowan and initiating the Gowan Must Go campaign? Where were Major Mustafa and Co. when I was detained by the State Security Service for criticizing your passenger military regime? My lord, these are pertinent questions to ask these liars. Where were Major Mustafa and Co. when I was criticizing Alaji Shagari civilian administration? Thus, Major Mustafa and Co. 
describing me as a jeep and government in power is pure black men. Pure black men. Pure black men. I initiated the government school campaign. The Robertson Joe is living. Thank God he's head of state today. I was one of his strongest critics. He's chief of uh, staff, Major General Abdullah Mohammed. I think he was, uh, they were calling NSO then. You know, arrested me. He cannot be supported with historical facts. So I am not any government in power. I was tired of being detained by the SSS for criticizing the Gawa military regime and the Basenjo military regime. Thus, I became a practical revolutionary politician and I decided to change my strategy and tactics. My Lord, that was why I supported the Babangida and Abacha military regimes. I realized that it would be better to work in the corridors of power and promote my revolutionary ideas and suggestions <laughs> to our leaders. Yes, my Lord. That was why I decided to support Babangida and Abacha. Major Mustafa and Co. Current campaign of blackmail and calumny against me, Janadia Jalabuaka, must be ignored by this patriotic and historic commission and the general public. Mustafa is just trying to get public sympathy. Let him go and face his court case in Lagos. Major Mustafa and Co. are people drowning and are determined to pull down innocent people with themselves. I said I'm forgiving them. I said I'm a good Christian. I'm a born again Christian. They should go with our Allah. They said I must come here and <laughs> there is a patriotic need for Nigerians and the world to really know Major Mustafa from an objective analysis of Mustafa's character by an army officer who worked closely with Mustafa. My God, this is very, very important, my Lord. It will help your commission. He worked with President, we worked with Mustafa in Presidential Villa. I even saw him this, this morning here. His name is Major Bilamidu Mohammed, former army officer to the Legion Abacha. He worked closely with Mustafa, and I think he's here to give evidence. Uh, you know, in some respects. I wish to quote from the attack exhibit. It's with my lawyer. Inside that weekly magazine, number 7, July 2, 2001, titled, My War in Asorok, Billy Aminu Mohammed. The first question to Major Mohammed was this. Were you aware of the kind of person Mustafa was before you started to work together in Asorok? Answered by Major Mohammed. Well, if you know Mustafa from Nigeria Defense Academy, you will at least expect that Mustafa will portray himself the way he has done now before the Nigerian public. Mr. Mohammed continued, my lord. However, the only moment I started sensing danger about Mustafa was when Mustafa started narrating nasty stories of how he, Mustafa, contributed in the manhandling of the April 1990 coup plotters. Mustafa, according to Mohammed, told him, Mohammed, how he, Mustafa, poured acid on the third road in front of the security group, Ababa, and ordering soldiers to compel alleged plotters you who are seniors anyway, to lay their back flat on the acid, open their eyes, facing the sun, never to blink and continuously watch the sun. Mustafa said after some minutes, when such victims were ordered by him to jump up, the entire skin of their back will peel off. What a character, Mustafa. Mustafa said he would then order soldiers to rain Koboko, horse on these innocent Nigerians arrested for fake coups. Mustafa said any general senior officer that was brought before him saw her. Again, while in the villa, Major Mohammed said he noticed that Mustafa was a very deceitful and master liar. Major Mohammed is here. He will come and confirm. Mustafa will tell the security boys to apply for money. And Mustafa will send the applications to the administration office with the message that he had approved their document when it was with me. Sometimes Mustafa will tell the boss that I already collected the money. Some other time, he will tell the security boys not to allow Alaji Guazu. You see, anytime you call him with Guazu, he will tell the, uh, his boys not to allow even the security advisor not to enter the villa. Mustafa, may God forgive you. <laughs> Mustafa said Guazu was eating their money when he himself, Mustafa, was eating people's money. Also, Lieutenant Kanaya Kasai once told me, my lord, listen, sir, and the night, you, you want facts. 1997 alleged group plotters in Jaws that even as a cadet, Mustafa was already bad and wicked. Kana Yakasai said that Mustafa was sending people or sometimes come physically to the Amadou Bello University Teaching Hospital to visit the mortuary attendants for human parts. According to Kana Yakasai, Major Mustafa was burying these human parts at different parts of the Defense Academy Parade Ground, then as a cadet to assist him to pass out. In fact, Kana Yakasai was doing his housemanship at the Abu University Teaching Hospital then. Another question put to Major Mohammed was this. Knowing that you and Mustafa were not in good terms, why did you choose to remain in the villa until you were arrested? Why did you attempt 
to leave Aso Rock before Mustafa implicated you in the 1997 coup plot. Major Mohammed replied, I realized the danger ahead. I attempted leaving in 1995. I tried leaving for school abroad, but it did not work. I appealed to Professor Yadudu. I saw him. He was legal advisor then. One of the most brilliant legal practitioners you have in Nigeria. I saw him here this morning. I appealed to Professor Awalu Yadudu. Intended to help me, but he was newly posted then. And I think he was too occupied and still trying to study the ground. In 1996, I told General Abubakar that I needed posting out of the presidency. General Abubakar paused and later replied that he never masterminded his posting since he joined the service. I think he was really surprised to hear such requests from me. I want to believe that General Abubakar was afraid of posting me out as he could be queried on the purpose of the posting. Since General Abubakar was not in the good book then of the Abacha Junta, people like Mustafa were knocking the heads of generals together. In fact, Mustafa was named like a general, a bloody major. He was the chief of defense staff. Again, early 1997, I told Kanebako that I wanted to go and post him out of the villa. In his own case, I didn't hide anything. I told him about my subject with Mustafa and co. And Kanebako was already sensing problem. Kanebako told me that working in the villa was virtually not the issue. That I should let entertain patients and should avoid Mustafa as much as I could. Kanebako said I could systematically leave if selected for one military post or the other. I never returned to the villa, but should secure a posting from there to any military unit. I bought this idea, but we didn't have a say that the Abasha administration was already coming to an end and that a sudden departure will endanger my life. The last question to Major Mohammed in this uh, edition of this Insider Magazine, my lord, my lawyer will present us an exhibit later. They ask him, my lord, listen, sir. Some people have, this, because people clap for Mustafa, this is important. Some people have described Mustafa as an intelligent officer. Do you think Mustafa is intelligent? Major Mohammed answered, well, Mustafa is not intelligent. Mustafa is not intelligent, full stop. That is the truth. And I know a lot of people, even his classmates, and they have this assertion. Have you worked with him? I know Mustafa very well. I accept if he said that Mustafa is crafty. He's just crafty. There is nothing he said. If he said that Mustafa is crafty and deceitful, fine, but not in intelligent. I owe that, that impression to you. Can Mustafa speak good Eng English? Look at all what he has been saying here. Miss, you know, inconsistencies. I don't know how you feel if I tell you that as major, uh, Mustafa always uh, say, okay. he has a slogan, that as far as he was concerned, life after the villa was a bonus. How can an intelligent person say that? Then Major Mohammed went on in the last paragraph, sir. The army did not at any stage of our training or service instruct that murder was a prerequisite for promotion to higher rank. I repeat, the army did not at any stage of their training or service instruct that murder was a prerequisite for promotion to higher rank. What the army taught Nigerian soldiers, brilliant Nigerian army officers, intelligent Nigerian army officers, was to spare the lives of both combatants and non-combatants without compromising any given mission. Major Mohammed concluded, Mustafa regimentation is zero because Mustafa never served in any battalion or regiment. He never went to any civil war. Maybe he was too young then. He had been following big shots, either as ADC, MA, or SO. A bloody opportunist. I decided to quote extensively. He can sue me to court. I'm ready for you. I decided to quote extensively from this interesting and revealing interview. Major Bilamin Mohammed retired, granted inside that weekly magazine, so that this patriotic Honorable and Historic Commission, my lord, and the general public, who used to clap for Mustafa when he's telling all his lies, will agree with me that Major Mustafa is indeed a non-repentant sadist, a pathological liar, a diabolical soul. Not only that, a conscienceless boy. He's a small boy. I'm 50 years of age. How old are you? <laughs> Thus, one can say further that Major Mustafa, my lord, I train in Russia, I train in Moscow. I know how to fight People like this creating problems for Nigeria. I train in Russia, my lord. Those one can say further that Major Mustafa, Alaji Guazu, and Co. are very dangerous human beings for animalistic characters who are full of deadly intrigues and who can conspire to eliminate innocent people for no just cause. I pray for you over your mother case in Lagos. Major Mustafa and Co. are annoyed that I'm currently involved in some patriotic projects that will ensure the survival of democracy in our great nation. My lord, when I withdrew this uh, petition, I was a nationwide talk in respect of this project. Nigeria, the democratically elected governors, and the achievements so far. May 1999 to May 2000. 
patriotic contributions to the survival of democracy in Nigeria. Chief Yomi Tokoya. This was first edition, my lord. You see, I pay costly call on governors, I advise them, I visit their project sites, and I documented their, their, their contributions, their achievements, so that military will not come into Nigeria again. In fact, I was on a nationwide talk for the second edition, which is due to be published next month, before Mustafa said I should come here and answer to false allegations. My lord, Mustafa is a very dangerous informant, paid informant and a diabolical security operative. In fact, if Mustafa is a good security operative, my lord, you are not even supposed to disclose to your informants all over the world. Let me try and educate him. In Russia, you have the KGB, where I studied. In Israel, you have the Mossad. In Britain, you have the M15. In America, you have the Central Intelligence Agency. You see, my lord, sir, some officials of the State Security Service, make sure they are some of the most intelligent Nigerians, very brilliant people, and they are patriots. Because without security agencies, we will not be able to even sit here. So it's my way. I'm trying to educate Mustafa. I'm trying to educate him. So it was even wrong of him. Even if I was an informer, it was wrong of Mustafa to disclose that I'm informer. But I was not even an informer. I was just a journalist and a publisher and a publicity consultant trying to help them. And they didn't want to be helped for the sake of our country. My lord, Mustafa is a very dangerous informant and diabolical security Yes. Mustafa is a very dangerous informant, my lord, and a diabolical security operative. Who is still monitoring my patriotic and revolutionary activities? From Krikri Prison, Apapa, Lagos, we are presently detained on the order of a high court. Am I might want to detain you. Why, why, why? Why will Mustafa not leave me alone? What is my business with him? I say I've forgiven him and Sabu for all their crimes. My lord, why is Major Mustafa worried about my revolutionary and patriotic activities under the Obasanjo administration? Mr. Mustafa told this commission, inter alia, Tokoya is now patronizing the present government, Obasanjo administration. Yes, what is wrong with that? They paid me millions, Abi. Go and collect your own now. <laughs> I'm a patron. Can you write? Can you write? You can write. Not in your head. <laughs> My lord. Mustafa went further to say, Mustafa went on to say, My lord, listen to Mustafa's lines. Eh? It's not, my, my lord, it's not just, it's not logical. Mustafa went on to say, eh, Tokoya has been told to withdraw the petition. Eh? How can Jawa Sanjo ask me to, I mean, she asked me to come and withdraw the petition. How? I've been away, my lord. I've been away from Abuja for about three months now, my lord. I brought uh, hotel bills for sighting. You know, I've been traveling for the past three months over a million naira. You can sit for sighting, my lord. You know, so I've not been in Abuja. So I, why, where did Obasanjo tell me to withdraw petition against you? I did this for religious reason and out of sympathy for you that I should not come here and add, to more your, add more to your problems. Eh? I say I don't want any pro more problems for you. May God help you out of the problems you have. You cannot say I should come here. <laughs> My Lord, Mustafa said, Government, go, Government comes. Tokoya remains active. He's now a born again Christian so that he can continue to have access to presidential villa. Even now, the campaign for Basanjo's second term has Tokoya in the mainstream. My Lord, even if I am working for Obasanjo's second term. What is Mustafa's business with that? If I am convinced that Obasanjo's second term will help this country and I decide to give him publicity, what is wrong in that? What is the business of Major Mustafa with me leading a campaign for a second term for President Obasanjo? My Lord, let me say categorically that by the grace of Almighty God, unpatriotic characters like Mustafa's and the Guazos can never, can never stop me from entering the presidential villa to worship in the new chapel constructed inside the presidential villa by the Obasanjo administration. We have a God who never fail. We have a God who never fail. We have a God who never fail. Who never fail. Who never fail. For a Oh Lord, our God, our excellent is the name. Oh Lord, our God, our excellent is the name. Oh Lord, oh Lord. Our God, how excellent is the name. Oh God, our God, how excellent is the name. Praise the Lord. Amen. Chief. May God forgive you, Sir Chief, Mustafa. Please, can you make a round up? My Lord, my Lord, sir. My God is a miracle working God. My Lord, sir. We do respect to you, sir. You want facts, sir. It's good to give you facts, my Lord. My Lord, our God is a miracle working God. Jesus Christ, his beloved Son, and our Lord and Savior. He's also a miracle worker. My Lord, as a born-again Christian and a child of God, 
I will continue to praise my God forever and ever, everywhere. Mustafa, repent. General Sabo, repent, and God will forgive you and help you out of your problems. One of the terms of reference, on a serious note, my Lord, my Lord, on a very, very serious note, to show you that I am a patriot, my Lord, that I am a patriot and a revolutionary politician who love this country. My Lord, on a serious note, one of the terms of reference of this patriotic and historic commission is to recommend measures which may be taken, whether judicial, administrative, legislative, or institutional, to redress past injustices by people like Mustafa and Sabo, and to prevent or forestall future violations or abuses of fundamental human rights. My Lord, that is one of the major terms of reference of this honorable commission. May God bless all of you forever. You are doing a wonderful job for our country. And God Almighty continue to bless you and all members of your family. Thus, my Lord, I humbly wish as a genuine patriot, nationalist and revolutionary to present through this commission a patriotic proposal to the Obasanjo administration to adopt Nigeriaism, not Abashaism this time, to adopt Nigeriaism, a self-land ideology for a new Nigeria as a national ideology. You see, the question of ideology, my Lord, is very important. I listen to you on the television, you always talk about the system, my Lord. You always talk about the system, about the structural problems, about the structural injustices in Nigeria. You see, all these problems can be solved if you do not run away from the question of ideology. And my Lord, I'm still prepared to prepare a paper for you. The need for an, an ideology. It will help us. Because if we have a separate ideology, most of this violation of human rights will not be before you today, my Lord. So, I am recommending to your Honorable Commission, Nigeriaism, a self land ideology for a new Nigeria, as a national ideology. And also, I'm advising this administration to launch immediately and formally five patriotic campaign projects that will usher in a Nigerian people's revolution. Because if you have a Nigerian people's revolution, people like Mustafa and Sabo, you know, will not be relevant. That will change Nigeria qualitatively and positively. My Lord, sir, distinguished members of this patriotic commission, fellow Nigerians, great Nigerians, God bless you all. These five campaign projects are the Buy Nigeria Campaign Project, which I've been shouting since 1985. Nigeria Cultural Revolution Campaign Project, Nigeria Industrial Revolution Campaign Project, Nigeria Scientific and Technological Revolution Campaign Project. Just few pages more, my dear, my lord, just six pages more. Nigeria Poverty Eradication Campaign Project. These five patriotic campaign projects are mass mobilization campaign projects that will mobilize patriotic Nigerians to become very active participants in the rapid social, economic, and political development of their nation. My Lord, it is a well-known fact that the highly developed countries of the world, for example, United States of America, Germany, France, Britain, Japan, Russia, North Korea, South Korea, and China. My Lord, sir, my Lord, sir, I start to be challenged. All these countries. My Lord, all these countries, all these countries, use effective national ideologies and mass mobilization campaign projects to mobilize their citizens to develop their countries to the current high levels in all fields of human endeavor. There will be no unemployment in Nigeria again if you do this campaign project. There will be no armed robbery again because everybody will have a job. The pertinent question to now ask my lord are as follows. What are the objectives of the Nigeria campaign project? The major objective is to mobilize, persuade and convince Nigerians to buy and export made in Nigeria goods and services. Nigerians must now be mobilized, persuaded and convinced to patronize goods and services made in Nigeria. Nigerians must be mobilized, persuaded and convinced to take pride in eating Nigerian food, wearing Nigerian dresses, listening and dancing to Nigerian music, writing and reading Nigerian books, consuming Nigerian drinks, and constructing houses with locally made building materials. Nigerians must also be mobilized, persuaded and convinced to export made in Nigerian goods and services so that they can earn more foreign exchange for Nigeria and themselves. That's one of the most profitable business. If you can export made in Nigerian goods, you'll make money. My Lord, what I'm saying in effect is that patronizing and exporting made in Nigerian goods and services will in the long run lead to the expansion of local industries, the building of new local industries, the development of new products and processes, and the creation of employment opportunities for our teen population. The success of the Bad Nigeria campaign project will boost and have positive multiplier effects on the remaining patriotic campaign projects. The major objective of the Nigeria Cultural Revolution campaign project is to mobilize, persuade, and convince everybody in Nigerians, that is workers, civil servants, soldiers, students, unemployed youth, 
to be actively involved in agriculture so that Nigeria can become self-reliant and self-sufficient in food production and the adequate supply of agricultural raw materials for our local industries. Nigerians who are engaged in agriculture must be supplied with loans, agricultural tractors and machinery, improved seedlings, fertilizers, other inputs and storage facilities. Nigeria needs urgently a government-sponsored back-to-the-land program Operation Feed the Nation. Nigerians must be encouraged to establish large-scale farms and plantations. Nigerians must be encouraged to invest in large-scale poultry, fishery and livestock production. With scientific planning and hard work, Nigerians can produce enough cocoa, groundnut, cassava, maize, rice, vegetable oil. <laughs> My Lord, we want to solve problems. This is a fact-fighting commission. I am giving suggestions so that we can solve our problems. Exportation of our cash crops will definitely earn Nigeria substantial foreign exchange and stop our realistic and crazy dependence on oil as the only source of foreign exchange. Thus, the urgent diversification of Nigeria's economy is imperative for the Obasanjo administration. A nationwide and efficient food storage, marketing, and distribution system need to be introduced immediately to ensure adequate food supply throughout Nigeria at cheap and reasonable prices. The river basin development authorities must be reorganized now to make them relevant, productive, and viable projects. Nigeria must recognize that food is politics in our contemporary world. The major objective of the Nigerian Industrial Revolution Campaign Project is to mobilize, persuade, and convince Nigerians to invest in manufacturing industries instead of being importers and distributors of products of foreign manufacturing industries. There is an urgent need to create the technological and material basis for a self land Nigeria. An industrial revolution in Nigeria is the most realistic part to economic independence and the building of a self-reliant, strong and prosperous Nigeria. Nigeria needs urgently petrochemical plants, flat sheet steel industries, agro-allied industries, agricultural and industrial machinery factories, motor and commercial vehicles factories, spare parts factories and tools factories. An enabling environment and adequate loan facilities must be provided for Nigerian industrialists. A successful Nigeria Industrial Revolution Campaign Program will create more employment opportunities to millions of Nigerians and ensure adequate supply of essential commodities to the local and foreign market. The major objective of the Nigeria Scientific and Technological Revolution Campaign Project is to mobilize, persuade and convince Nigerian scientists, engineers, technologists, technicians, researchers and other creative geniuses to produce great inventions and generate great ideas for the agricultural, industrial, scientific and technological revolution in Nigeria. Does the urgent need to allocate more funds for the science and technology village in Sheda? My Lord, my Lord, Chief, Chief. My, my Lord, Chief. My Lord, Chief. I am finished, I am finished. I am finished. My Lord. Why Mustafa was telling his lies? You didn't stop him. My Lord, sir. This is a free country. This is a free country. You can't please. my mouth. This uh, is please. Where was that? Uh, please. please. You didn't please. stop him. Please. We urge everybody to be silent, please. Just listen to the witnesses and nothing more. Please. Please. Chief. We urge you to be silent, please. My Lord. Please. My Lord. Please. I... Please. My Lord. My Lord, let me conclude. Let me just conclude. My Lord, let me conclude. My Lord, let me conclude. My Lord, we do respect to you. When Mustafa come and tell his lies, then you will listen. You can't get my mouth. Chief. I'm a free Nigerian. Chief. My Chief. Lord, let me conclude. I'm concluding. Chief. Chief. Uh, please. Chief, please, can you listen to me? Chief. We do respect, my Lord. Chief. Please, we urge you to be silenced, please. In the name of God, please. Chief, please, we beg you to be silenced. Just listen to the witness. Chief, Maintain thank you very silence, much for please, and allow the patriot to finish his submission. Please. I will do the case. I will do the case. I will do the case. And you say I should come. Chief. So if you want to, Chief. If you allow me to stop. I didn't want to come. Chief, you me. Chief. Chief, please, can you listen to me, please? Okay. I am the counsel leading you in this matter. Chief. I am the counsel leading you in this matter. 
please, so that we don't weary their lordship and his lordship and the honorable members of the, of the commission. Since this is already uh, in written form, although you are about exhausting what is there, I want to suggest that since you have mentioned the five points of your, because you know what you have done, I, I didn't want to stop you because it's part of the terms of reference of this honorable commission. That's why I didn't stop you. But uh, so that you don't weary yourself and weary everybody, mm. I humbly suggest that having highlighted the five point program you are suggesting for this present administration to use, yes, my Lord. you don't need to go into the nitty gritty of it. It's, it's submitted already to their lordship and to every uh, respondent in this matter for if they care to have a look at it to okay, see whether you have general just, uh, intent. And dear my lord. So, Steve, so Chief, my lord, thank you I very know much. Ending, so just go to the God last paragraph. Go my to lord, the last paragraph. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful. God bless you forever. Yeah, we want to... My lord, my lord, we... My lord, we have, uh, because of the, the way this response had to be taken by the, by the witness, my lord, the petitioner witness, we want to humbly apply, my lord, to tender a lot of SDB. There are very many to back up a lot of uh, claims the witness have made in, in this addendum, SDB 15. I do not intend to worry your lordship because uh, it's not very easy for your lordship to go through all this, but I don't want to ask that it be taken one after the other and then numbered. The lordship will find them invaluable and uh, it will indeed make your lordship to understand all the things that the witness have been saying for almost an hour ago. And uh, I only wish to... Please can, can you pass this into the witness? I can, if you want me to take the, if my lord wants me to take them one after the other, I can do that. But I just felt we could save the time of this honorable commission. I can read them, the headings, and uh, your lordship. Uh, I want to your lordship to uh, admit them as exhibits in this uh, petition. Why don't you tender them as patriotic documents? Then A, B, C. Right <laughs> as, lord, as, as my lord pleases, sir. I, we are most obliged, sir. We are most obliged. These patriotic documents, <laughs> I only apply to one, two, three, this one. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, my lord, J, K, L, M, N, O, N and O, they are, they are joined together, P, and Q, my lord, A to Q, my lord. We only apply to tender them in evidence. My Lord and uh, R, R, the last one, the, the, the Abuja Mirror publication, where is Yomi Tokoya? R, that is R, R for Remy. Hello, we seek to tender all those uh, patriotic, as uh, the Reverend Father said, documents in, in, as exhibit in this. Uh, Historic Commission. Last exhibit was 15, isn't it? This is 16? A to R. A to yes, R. Madam, exhibit 16, A to R. Very good, sir. My Lord, I... Yes, my Lord, uh, the documents have been admitted as Exhibit 16A to R. I want to humbly apply that the witness be allowed to read the last paragraph of the uh, addendum. 
please, you, are not, you can't teach me to condemn my case. Please, can you read the conclusion to this uh, honorable commission? The conclusion of Exhibit 15, the one you were reading that I interrupted you. Just that conclusion, the, where you have conclusion. Conclusion, just the conclusion. Okay, conclusion. That's 103, clause 103. Okay, my lord, On conclusion. I have followed in the mass media the proceedings of this patriotic and historic commission, and I'm greatly impressed about how the brilliant, intelligent, and hardworking members and staff of this commission have been handling this sensitive national assignment. My lord, I wish to say again that I am convinced that you are all God-fearing, great, courageous, fearless, and patriotic Nigerians who will definitely uphold the great ideas of truth, fair play, justice, freedom, peace, and democracy in your final report to the democratically elected Obasanjo administration. The struggle continues for a new social, economic, and political order in our great nation, Nigeria. May Almighty God continue to protect and bless all members and staff of this patriotic and historic commission. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God continue to protect and bless all patriotic, revolutionary, and progressive Nigerians and all progressive forces throughout the world. Amen. Thank you very much. Yours Chief. in Thank the service you. of our great nation, Nigeria and humanity. Thank Chief you, Chief. Chief. Thank you. I, having read this, having read this Exhibit 15 and tendered Exhibit 60A to our Chief, I'd like you to tell this Honorable Commission whether in any way all the things you have said links you with any alleged coup in 1997, Captain for as a result of which you are to be detained for six months. Capital, no, my lord. Now, so what would you want to say before this commission, uh, consequent upon your detention, arrest, detention, and uh, torture? What do you want to, what are your prayers before this honorable My Lord, as I stand by my letter of withdrawal, I have forgiven my friend Mustafa and Sabo. I have forgiven them. May God Almighty forgive them too. I don't want any compensation. My Lord, uh, that would be all for the witness. My Lord, I will be all for the witness. Thank you, sir. Listen to your questions. Um, can I go on, my lord? Thank you very much. <laughs> Chief Yomi Tokoya. Yes, my lord. I congratulate you for your forgiving heart. God bless you, my uh -huh. lord. When did your relationship with Mustafa started, because, uh, started becoming bad? My Lord, as far as I'm concerned, I don't have any problem with Mustafa. Maybe he has a problem with me. <laughs> my Lord, okay. my Lord. It's all right, it's all right. My Lord. It's all right. I can embrace Mustafa now. No, Chief. Uh, I wait. can embrace no, him. No, uh, Chief. Yes, my Lord. Don't worry about the public. You should continue to pursue your patriotic campaign. Don't worry. God bless you, my Lord. Nobody should distract you. God bless you, my Lord. And then you should continue to maintain your bone again posture. And in that spirit, God bless you, my me Lord. and you will help the commission. God bless you. I'm very Lord. sure about that one. Thank you very much. Okay. Much obliged. If I ask you to get a plain paper and just write, I'm a bone again and sign, do you have any problem with that one? I will not. Okay, please give me a uh, plain sheet. I'm a born again and then sign. <laughs> my lord, my lord, uh, chief, chief, please wait. My lord, I'm objecting to that application because I cannot see the relevance of that application. It's absolutely irrelevant to what is before this honorable commission. 
Chief, Chief, you don't need to write anything. My Lord, sir, my, my Lord, I have a vehement objection. My Lord, sir, I have a vehement objection to that uh, request by the learner Council to the respondent. Preliminary objection to cross-examination. As a vehement one, my Lord, because... Preliminary uh, what? A ve vehement... That's vehement. The, exactly, my Lord. Objection. Ma very well, my Lord. Uh, what? We are talking on a very... Objection to what? Ob for the request, the learner Council is asking uh, my client... The, the, what the, are the, the limits of cross-examination? My Lord, this is absolutely... What are the limits? That if you tell me the limits, we know whether he has gone beyond those limits. My Lord, <laughs> my Lord, the issue before you... Can we make be progress? My Lord, sir, the issue Can before... Can we make progress? Let him write. It's nothing bad in writing. As a lot you please. Thank you. I thank my learner friend for assisting me. Like I said, Chief, Yes. let us just put assist the commission. Yes, my lord. I know you are a very patriotic human being. Hmm? Yes, my lord. So have you signed the letter now? No, come and collect it now. I'm a born again. Signed, Chief Tokoya. Okay. Let's hold it. So, if you see your handwriting, mm. as a born again Christian, I'm very sure you can say this is my handwriting. Of course. Thank you. Well, have a look at this document, whether it's the one. Yes. It's it, my handwriting. It's your document. By Nigeria Campaign Organization, yes. Thank you very much. That's Exhibit 3, my Lord. Yes. Will you kindly yes. read the contents of that exhibit to the members of the commission? My Lord, I'll do that. 20 exhibit 3. Yes, Exhibit 3, my Lord. 28th of August, 1994. Uh, what about it. the one he wrote? Has it been tendered? Yeah. That's I, 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 I'm going to tender it, my Lord. Mm. Yes. He has just written that one. The one you ask him to write. Yes, my lord. Born again. Yes, my lord. You don't. <laughs> don't you want to tender it, my lord? My lord, the, I'm just trying to save the time of the commission. I was hoping that he will not say that is his handwriting. But having said it is wait, having said it is the one. This one is unnecessary. That's why I refuse to tender it, my lord. Thank my you lord, very much. Let me read it. Let me uh -huh. read it. It even has my case. By Nigeria Campaign Organization, uh, 28th of August 1994, uh, Asokoro District, Abuja. My dear Major Mustafa, I am greatly shocked. Wait, take it, uh, take it gently. You know, my you dear Major Mustafa, mm -hmm. I am greatly shocked and surprised that, despite the fact that the head of state, CNC, indicated, underlined, interest to see him, underlined. You have refused to book an appointment for me to see him. I am tired of telephoning you or sending messages to you. Some people who are not even loyal to this military administration have regular access to the commander-in-chief. Some people who are not, some people, my lord sir, some people, it helps my case, some people who are not more important than me in this country have regular access to the CNC. I do not like to fight my friends. Thus, I have decided to leave you to Almighty Allah and your conscience. I will definitely see the Commander-in-Chief one day by the grace of Almighty Allah. Despite your negative attitude to me, I will continue to support the Commander-in-Chief and ensure the success of his patriotic military administration. Please, they attach for your patriotic per perusa. Yours in the service of our great nation. Chief Yomi Tokoya. Full thank stop. You, thank you very much. Thank you. So, Chief. Yeah, to give it to them. I will be correct to say that as at 1994, you were chairman of Yanya Community Bank. Correct. 
Thank you very much. Correct. Did you recall anything that led to police investigation regarding one or two allegations against you? My Lord, I was not only the founder of Yanyan Community Bank, I financed the setting of Yanyan Community Bank with over 10 million naira. And that was not even under Abacha regime. The bank was opened under Babangida's regime. And there was boardroom crisis, which eventually was resolved. The bank was handed over. The facts are there with no the National Board for Community Banks. The most important thing is you are aware that the Nigerian police once investigated you in relation to certain alleged activities. They may not necessarily be true. Nigerian police did not investigate me. National Board for Community Bank investigated me. Thank you very much. So if you see the letter of complaint Yes. Written to the Deputy Inspector General of Police, first investigation, uh, Alagon Close, in the stroke of you. Yes. Will you recognize the letter? I will recognize it. Okay, have a look at this one. What is the one? Nothing is secret in the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. The back behind. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wait. Wait there, since you recognize it. Mm. You said at all material times, yes. late General Sani Abacha has been your good friend. Yes. So I'm sure if you see his uh, minutes, you mm. will recognize. Mm. Okay. Have a look at that minute by the side, allegedly signed by late Sani Abacha. What does it say? Read it carefully. No, listen, listen, listen now. No, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me. I have not. Just a minute. I have not seen, no, I have not seen the late head of state signature here. Okay, bring so, it, bring it, it here, Lord. bring it here. It's Mustafa Sisson that is there. Don't worry. <laughs> you can't trick me. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school. Show him this. Well educated. Show him this. My lord, my lord, my lord, my lord. Listen now, I have not, I have not identified the late CC signature on this thing. Okay, wait, don't worry, don't worry. I know you will not identify it, don't worry. Yes, I have Bring not. Here. <laughs> you are well educated. Yes. Okay, kindly help the commission just read this part. I just want to, once you did it, mm. we won't have problem. We then proceed mm. this minute to CSO and Major Aminu. Is this an next bit? Issue? No, my lord, I want to, I want to lay foundation for tender aid. My lord, this issue has nothing to do with this matter. No! <laughs> Mustafa said, Abacha made me chairman of People's Bank. Then Abacha did not make me chairman of People's Bank. I am chairman of Yaya Community Bank, which I set up with my own money over 10 million naira. My lord, sir, uh, the... What are people talking about? I don't know about? where my, my learned friend is going, but uh, I do not want to preempt him. I always want the counsel to have his feed when it comes to cross-examination. <laughs> but I want to also caution my lord that uh, your lordship is a... F this commission, my lord, is a fact-finding commission. Facts relating to abuses of human rights and allied matters. I do not know what my learned friend is trying to impose into this matter. A, my, the witness cannot be asked to identify a document he's not the maker of. The maker of that document is not alert to be dead. He's not the maker. He was not, uh, he was not in the villa. Did you read your own petition? My lord, I'm not, I'm not taking the Did petition. Did you read your own petition? Very well, my lord. Exhibit 1 and exhibit, I think, 15. 15. Yes, my lord. Have you read them yourself? Very well, my lord, sir. Are they confined to what you are now saying that... They are definitely you know. not, my lord. <laughs> they are not, my lord. Save time. My lord, what, what, my lord, what I'm saying is that the witness cannot be asked to identify a document he's not the maker of. He's not privy to that in document. That's the important thing. You have an opportunity to re examine. So Anybody? Oh, as a lawyer, very good for you. Very good for you. For the benefit of my learned friend, this commission has power to take evidence even from the dustbin. What it is required to do is that to give it a dustbin value if it likes. The witness has said. He has identified the document. I seek to tender it in evidence at this stage. He said 
can't. Uh, he has. No, he said he has identified the document. As what? As, As the complaint of uh, Board of Community Bank against him. Which on the bank that he has set up with his what money. Are you for identification of as an exhibit, which as an exhibit, my lord. Don't distract us. <laughs> Give him. Do quick, Abek. Do quick and give him. Yes, my lord. I'm listening to you. <laughs> Bring it quickly. Exit 17. As a, as a commission, please show him. Take this to him. This minute, as an educated person, just read it. We are helping the commission. You are a very patriotic person. That much I know. Mm. Just the minute. Read the minute. My lord, these people bring all kinds of false documents. It's not new to Mustafa. I cannot read it. I'm sorry. Okay. I can't see it. These are false documents. Yet, you know, issue of my bank has nothing to do with human rights abuses. No. Why are you trying to deceive the public? Don't worry.